I have given you delta S for isothermal, isochoric, and isobaric. <clears throat> Krishna, Saif, and uh, yes, sir. Arslan, have you completed it? Yes, sir. Okay, what will be the formula of isothermal for delta S? So 2.303 n log uh, v2 by v1. 2.303 n log v2 by v1. R will also be there, no? Oh, yes, yes. Uh, I missed star. Whether R. you will use this or this, the uh, for tamp uh, since it is isothermal, Saf, am I audible to you? <clears throat> since this is isothermal, <clears throat> then isothermal uh, that means temperature constant so this will be zero basically because t t2 and t1 will be equal and it will be cancelled and the value of log one is zero and the value of log one is zero so the whole quantity will be zero are you getting it sir yes sir so the new formula will be like <clears throat> log v2 upon v1 you can either take this or you can either take this <clears throat> v2 upon v1 or you can also uh, if this uh, you are going to put this as zero then it will be 2.303 nr log p1 by p2 or v2 by v1 is that clear yes yes <clears throat> and in case of isobaric you can see in case of isobaric pressure will be constant and if pressure will be constant then log p1 by p2 it was in last log p1 by p2 this will be equal to this and it will be cancelled again log 1 has a value that will be equal to 0 so again the value will be <clears throat> in terms of temperature because pressure is constant if pressure is constant then we, this will be 0 and delta s will be <clears throat> 2.303 ncv and log t2 by t1 is that clear Yes, sir. And again, for <clears throat> the third case, which was <clears throat> isochoric. Isochoric means volume will be constant. Volume is constant. So, if you will see the first formula of delta S, <clears throat> here it is. This value is going to be zero. Because this will be equal and it will be cancelled by 1 and again log 1 is equal to 0. Then we will have uh, uh, 2.303 NCV log T2 upon T1. <clears throat> Arslan. <clears throat> Ifra. Yes, sir. Have you completed the last question I had given you? Yes, sir. Okay. Is there any doubt? Arsalan, Ifra, Krishna, Saif. No, sir. Hmm. Okay, so we are going to have some questions regarding this. This topic. The entropy change. Involved in. The entropy change involved in. Isothermal process, <clears throat> isothermal process, and reversible expansion, and reversible expansion of two mole of an ideal gas from a volume of 1 centimeter cube to or from a volume of 1 centimeter cube at 27 degrees centigrade. <clears throat> now you have to calculate. One centimeter cube to this was a 
वन सेंटीमीटर क्यूब टू टेन सेंटीमीटर क्यूब एट ट्वेंटी सेवन डिग्री सेंटीग्रेड प्लीज सॉल्व दिस टूडे वी विल कंप्लीट दिस चैप्टर Okay, if I will check it out. वेरी गुड इफ्रा एनी वन एल्स सैफ कृष्णा फवाज अरसलान वेरी गुड कृष्णा फवाज एनी आंसर फ्रॉम यू सर नोसन ओके सो लुक एट हेयर एंट्रोपी चेंज वी नीड टू कैलकुलेट एंट्रोपी चेंज इन्वॉल्व इन आइसोथर्मल प्रोसेस आइसोथर्मल प्रोसेस दैट रिप्रेजेंट्स टेम्परेचर इज कॉन्स्टेंट दैट रिप्रेजेंट्स टेम्परेचर इज कॉन्स्टेंट एंड रिवर्सिबल एक्सपेंसन देर इज ऑफ टू मोल ऑफ एन आइडियल गैस दैट इज गिवेन नंबर ऑफ मोल्स फ्रॉम अ वॉल्यूम वन सेंटीमीटर क्यूब टू टेन सेंटीमीटर क्यूब एट कॉन्स्टेंट एट ट्वेंटी सेवन डिग्री सेंटीग्रेड नाउ वी ऑल नो दैट डेल्टा एस एज अ वैल्यू डेल्टा एस इज इक्वल टू टू पॉइंट थ्री जीरो थ्री एन सी वी लॉग टी टू अपॉन टी वन प्लस टू पॉइंट वेट अ मिनट Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm, okay. It's just not working. No, it is okay. <clears throat> Now you can see that we have a formula. In the previous class, two point three zero three NCV log T two upon T one plus two point three zero three NR log V two upon V one. Why I used V two upon V one? Because volume is given. If pressure is given, 
pressure was given then log p1 upon p2 <coughs> we can use instead of log v2 upon v1 now you will see that since temperature is constant so 2.303 ncv log this temperature is t and this temperature is also t because temperature is constant self am i audible to you yes sir and it will be log v2 upon v1 now this will be cancelled and the value of will be equal to 2.303 ncv and this is log 1 the value of log 1 is 0 the value of log 1 is 0 so the whole quantity on the left hand side will be 0 and we will left with the formula nr 2.303 nr log v2 upon v1 now you can see that we have a formula what it is 2.303 and n n is number of moles which is 2 given and the value of r will be 8.314 that will be joule and log v2 upon v1 volume is 10 final and initial volume is 1 log 10 has a for, uh, value which is equal to 1 and when we will multiply it it will be almost equal to 38.2 something joule per kelvin per mole write it please write it and let me know if you are done with this krishna arslan saif yes done, sir. done saif arslan fawaz done sir okay saif what about you yes sir okay thank you so i'm going to write the formula of delta s for every process like delta s for isothermal delta s for isothermal process isothermal process basically represents that t1 equals to t2 and log 1 will be 0 so we have a formula delta s for isothermal is equal to 2.303 nr log v2 upon v1 nr log v2 upon v1 again delta s for isochoric process isochoric represents that the volume is constant that means it doesn't change initial and final are same so it will be v1 is equal to v2 and we will have a formula delta s is equal to 2.303 ncv log t2 upon t1 and again delta s for isobaric process sorry isobaric process you know that p1 equals to p2 that means this quantity will be zero along with this everything so delta s will be 
303 since pressure is constant so we will take cp if you remember heat capacity when pressure is constant heat capacity at constant pressure and it will be log t2 upon t1 so we have three formula for different process three different process you can write this <clears throat> If you are done with this, let me know, please. Done, sir. Very good. Very good, Ifra. Arslan, Saif, and Fawaz waiting for you three. Done, done sir. Saif? Yes. Yes, sir, done. Yes, London. So moving to the next topic. Basically, it is related to the same entropy for different physical process. So write a topic, a small topic. Change in entropy. Change in. Entropy. in physical reaction change in entropy in physical reaction a is entropy of vaporization entropy of vaporization vaporization that is that involves liquid into gas the process of converting liquid into gas and change during this phase transformation is called vaporization so delta s vaporization is equal to q reversible upon t q reversible upon t that will be equal to this Q reversible will be equal to delta H change in entropy, uh, change in enthalpy for vaporization upon T boiling point. Boiling point. This T is basically boiling point when it will change into vapor. When sub -substan uh, some substance, <coughs> when sub uh, when a substance changes its physical state from liquid to gas that is called vaporization and the temperature at which it is changing its physical state from liquid to gas that temperature is called boiling point so basically here the temperature will be boiling point so if i will ask what will be the t for uh, water for converting from liquid to gas, the T of boiling, uh, that is uh, boiling point of water is 100 degree centigrade. Just write it. Done, sir. Done, sir. Okay, next you are going to write entropy of fusion. Entropy of fusion. So basically, fusion is a process in which solid is converting into liquid fuse so basically here delta s fusion will be equal to q reversible upon temperature and it will be equal to this q reversible will be equal to delta h fusion enthalpy 
change in enthalpy for fusion upon temperature whatever temperature is given <clears throat> and the c part is three physical state going for entropy of sublimation what is entropy for sublimation sublimation is a process in which a substance is converted directly into gas from solid that is known as sublimation and you can see that <clears throat> delta s will be equal to q reversible upon t q reversible upon t and this q reversible will be equal to delta h sublimation delta h sublimation upon t <clears throat> please write it and we will have some questions on these topics too done sir done everyone <coughs> saif ifra fawaz yes, arsalan yes, yes sir done saif yes, very good so going to have a question on this topic the enthalpy of vaporization for water is 185 kilo joule per mole then calculate the entropy change calculate the entropy change <clears throat> this is very easy so we have to take temperature in kelvin yes always take temperature into kelvin okay कर सकते हैं आप लोग
वेरी गुड कृष्णा टिफ्रा इज इट योर आंसर जीरो पॉइंट फोर यू डिडेंट कन्वर्ट किलो जूल इन टू जूल राइट किलो जूल ना सो योर आंसर विल बी जीरो पॉइंट फोर किलो जूल सॉरी जीरो पॉइंट फोर किलो जूल पर कैलविन पर मोल राइट ओके एनी आंसर फ्रॉम सैफ वेरी गुड सैफ फवाज अरसलान फवाज आई एम वेटिंग फॉर योर आंसर just so i'm going to explain it uh, the enthalpy of vaporization enthalpy of vaporization delta h vaporization is equal to 185 kilo joule per mole is given so you can if you want to change it <coughs> you can easily change it into joule per mole then calculate the entropy change delta s has a formula delta h vaporization upon t T is given. <clears throat> we know that for vaporization, we will take it as boiling point. It is understood, as I told you. So, boiling point of water is hundred degree centigrade, and it is in Kelvin, three seventy three Kelvin. So, just put it three seventy three, and here it will be eighty one eighty five into ten raised to the power three. Then it will be four ninety five point nine joule per Kelvin per mole. and if you will convert into kilo then it will be 0.495 uh, you can say <coughs> kilo joule per kelvin per mole but generally we calculate <coughs> entropy <coughs> into in joule but according to the question or option you can easily change it <coughs> okay arslan fawaz okay sir okay <coughs> can i change the slide are you done with this sir one minute sir okay take your time नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन द लेटेंट हीट ऑफ फ्यूजन फॉर वॉटर इज एटी कैलरी पर ग्राम कैलकुलेट द चेंज इन एंड ट्रॉपी कैलकुलेट द चेंज इन एंड ट्रॉपी लेट एंड हीट ऑफ फ्यूजन इज गिवेन as 80 calorie per gram <clears throat> for water calculate the change in entropy done with this
کرشنا سیف افرا ارسلان فواز اینی آنسر اٹس واٹ از دا یونٹ آف ڈیلٹا ایس محمد And mass of water, do you know? Total, uh, basically total heat of fusion will be 80 into 18 because one mole of because one mole of water consists comprises of 18 grams. That's why 80 into 18 will be calorie per mole. Will it be or not? Yes, sir. It yeah. is for one gram. This is for one mole. So delta S has a formula. delta vapor uh, delta h fusion upon temperature and for fusion it is 0 degree centigrade and it will be 273 in kelvin and what it will be 80 into 18 so whatever it will, it will be joule per mole per kelvin or joule per kelvin per mole whatever you want to write it will be almost 5 point something joule per kelvin per mole and if you want to write joule per mole per kelvin you can write it <clears throat> is that clear arslan fawaz saif yes sir so uh, understand the concept of question it was given that calorie per gram so basically uh, mohammed if you have solved like 80 upon 273 that means you have solved per uh, according to per gram but in terms of Uh, uh, entropy we always calculate per mole in terms of per mole so that's why i just took the water uh, mass of water 18 and converted into per mole <clears throat> if you are done with this let me know mohammed krishna arslan and done sir done just a minute sir okay <clears throat> done sir done the enthalpy of the vaporization is 30 kilo joule per mole and change in entropy <clears throat> and change in entropy of vaporization change in entropy is given 75 joule per mole per kelvin calculate boiling point of liquid at 1 atm <clears throat> i'm going to change this color is it visible everyone yes sir yes sir okay thank you
वेरी गुड इफ्रा कृष्णा वेरी गुड वेटिंग फॉर सैफ अरसलान एंड फवाज अरसलान सेफ वॉट यू हैव कैलकुलेटेड टेम्परेचर एंड वॉट इज द यूनिट ऑफ टेम्परेचर वॉट इज द यूनिट ऑफ टेम्परेचर एंड वॉट यू रोट इन द चैट बॉक्स is it calvin by the way very good but be careful with units okay so yes sir arslan and fawaz look at the screen delta s vaporization it has a formula delta h vaporization upon t and we need to calculate this t so t will be equal to delta h vaporization wait a minute <clears throat> this will be equal to delta h vaporization upon delta s vaporization and what is delta h vaporization you can see enthalpy of vaporization is 30 kJ per mole so 30 and delta s vaporization this is 5 joule per mole per kelvin so you can easily see that this mole and mole will be cancelled this joule and joule will be cancelled and now 25 3 is a, and it will be like 25 4 0 and 3 10 is a, and the value of t will be 14 into 10 that will be equal to 400 kelvin <clears throat> is that clear arslan fawaz yes sir yes okay arslan are you done with this okay fawaz yes sir done okay moving to the next question <clears throat> calculate the entropy change in surrounding when one mole of h2o that is in liquid is formed under a standard condition under a standard 
condition and here it is given delta fh that is formation is given as 286 kilojoule per mole 286 kilojoule per mole calculate entropy change in surrounding Anyone? Very good, Ifra. What is this? 0 0.05. The first answer was right. Sorry, sir. I was writing the unit, so 9 became 0. Okay. Krishna, are you done with the question? Yes, sir, Sunny. Okay. Saif? One minute, sir. It's wrong answer, Krishna. It's too much. Look at this. We have <coughs> delta S system is equal to Q reversible upon T. And it was, we need to calculate about surrounding. So when it comes to delta S surrounding, who will give entropy or enthalpy to the surrounding? This system. So whenever system gives heat, it will be in negative. If you remember the sign convention, then work done by the system is negative. Work done on the system is positive. Heat given to the system is positive. Heat given by the system is negative. So it will be minus Q system upon T. And we can easily replace Q by it is given that delta FH. So I'm going to write it delta FH and negative in the system. So it will be like this. And we are going to put the value minus into minus 286 that will be positive and what will be the temperature it is given at a standard condition that means 25 degree centigrade at a standard condition converted into kelvin it will be 298 kelvin so when we will solve it it will be almost 0 0.96 kilojoule per mole per kelvin because i didn't convert kilojoule into joule that's why it is in kilojoule per mole per Kelvin. Everyone clear? Yes, sir. Okay, write it.
डन सर ओके एवरीवन डन सैफ सैफ आर यू डन विद ओके वेरी गुड सो मूविंग टू द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन ऑलवेज रिमेंबर दैट इन टर्म्स ऑफ रिएक्शन डेल्टा एस फॉर रिएक्शन विल बी इक्वल टू डेल्टा एस रिएक्शन विल बी इक्वल टू सिग्मा डेल्टा एस ऑफ प्रोडक्ट whatever is given in the reaction that will be the value of whatever is the entropy change for product minus sigma delta s for reactant so this value will be given the entropy change in react uh, reactant as well as the entropy change of product so according uh, according uh, on this formula we are going to have a question a reaction is given h2 in gaseous state plus cl2 in gaseous state will give 2 hcl will give 2 hcl and in the question delta s for h2 is given as 133 joule per kelvin 133 joule per kelvin delta s for cl2 is given as 236 joule per kelvin and delta s for hcl is given as 186 joule per kelvin calculate delta s for a reaction the answer is too easy it will be solved on this formula what will be the unit this is important write the unit with it if you are very good but don't forget about unit saif krishna arslan fawaz is there any answer very good krishna Saif, I'm going to explain it. Just see, we have a formula. This formula. So HCl has a value one eighty six kilojoule. Joule per Kelvin, and here according to the formula, delta S for reaction will be equal to product minus reactant. Just see, product product has a value one eighty six Joule per Kelvin, but according to the question, two HCl is involved, so two mole of HCl here is only one mole of HCl has a value one eighty six Joule per Kelvin. So for two mole of HCl, according to the question, so we are going to multiply it by two into one eighty six minus. what will be the value of reactant the first reaction is h2 and cl2 there is one mole one mole and the value of this one mole is given so we are going to add the reactants whatever is the reactants uh, actually only one product is formed that's why we took it only as one 
but in the reactant we are we have two reactants are given so we need to sum up 133 plus 236 and after summing just uh, subtract it and you, to, uh, you will get 3 joule per kelvin answer 3 joule per kelvin delta s for reaction will be equal to 3 joule per kelvin for us saif yes sir so please write it If you are done with this, let me know. Done, sir. Okay, very good. Write a question. Not a question. Just write a topic. After entropy, we will have a spontaneous process. So just write a topic. A spontaneous process what is a spontaneous process so i am going to define it and it is also known as or feasible process the process which can occur on its own there is no need of external effort that is known as a spontaneous process or also known as feasible process. Feasible process. So I'm going to write a definition. The process which has natural tendency to occur in particular direction without external effort is called a spontaneous or feasible process or feasible process the reaction or the process which is not uh, which is not in need of external agent they can occur it on or uh, on own that will be known as a spontaneous process so i'm going to write some examples of it all natural process are spontaneous all natural process are as spontaneous. Every natural process are as spontaneous. Melting of ice is as spontaneous. Evaporation of water, we can say it as as spontaneous. Freezing of water, this is all freezing of water basically taking it as a natural process so it's all are uh, a spontaneous process or feasible process right with me Sir, it requires external effort or it doesn't? It doesn't. Sir? It doesn't. Sir, you wrote uh, with external effort. Wait a minute. 
the process which has natural tendency to occur in particular direction with extern without external effect without external effect just correct it it is without external effort done sir done everyone done wait a minute Just uh, write another topic, which is non-spontaneous. Non-spontaneous. Also known as non-spontaneous process or non-feasible process, we can say non-feasible. non feasible process the process which cannot occur on its own they need external force external agent that uh, that process will be known as non spontaneous process so we can write the process which requires external agent continuously is known as non spontaneous process it is known as non spontaneous process flow of heat from low temperature to high temperature flow of heat from high temperature to low temperature can be easily carried out but flow of uh, temperature from heat, uh, from uh, flow of heat from low temperature to high temperature will be difficult so it will be always in need of or requirement of external agent continuously that is we can say ac refrigerator it's all non spontaneous process it always requires an external agent done sir done very good everyone done fawaz sir one minute okay take your time done sir <clears throat> very good fawaz if you are done let me know arslan Wait, sorry. Done for us. Yes, yes, done, sir. Mm. 
now write the topic factors responsible for a spontaneous or a spontaneity factors responsible for a spontaneity the first factor is basically energy the first factor is energy so we here we are going to write energy factor energy if energy decreases stability increases if energy decrease uh, decreases stability increases energy is inversely we can also write energy is inversely proportional to stability a molecules or a substance which has more energy is less stable or a molecules or substance which has less energy is more stable so every exothermic process all uh, or we can like uh, write all exothermic process are spontaneous all exothermic process are spontaneous is that clear everyone because every substance wants to be stable and exothermic process is one which releases energy and the product or the uh, process are carried to release energy so it will release energy to get stabilized so all exothermic process are a spontaneous process is that clear yes sir <clears throat> so we can also write uh, if you are done with this let me know <clears throat> done sir done everyone done sir okay yes sir wait a minute okay okay <clears throat> we are going to uh, before questions we are going to discuss gives free energy first so right to topic gives free energy and gives free energy from gives free energy or from the value of gives free energy we can easily tell which process is exothermic and which process is endothermic so what is basically gives free energy so going to write the definition of it it's very easy it is the part of total energy it is the part of total energy of system which can be converted which can be converted to do useful work which can be converted to do useful work that is basically non expansion work non expansion work also known as now see energy equals to here is going on what is going on useful work we can write useful work plus randomness energy whenever particles will move they will have energy and that energy is known as randomness energy so the energy which is used to do some useful work is known as gives free energy and here we will have a formula delta h is equal to g plus t s as we know that we cannot find the absolute value of h that is enthalpy and we cannot find the absolute value of entropy as well so we find basically we find change in entropy so uh, first i am going to write it as g equals to 
h minus t s and we cannot find the absolute value we always find the change in enthalpy change in internal energy change in entropy so we will find change in energy change in gibbs free energy <clears throat> so i can write delta g will be equal to delta h minus t delta s and from here we can decide which process is the following uh, which uh, uh, either uh, what is it basically a spontaneous non -a spontaneous or at equilibrium there will be th uh, three condition depending upon the value of uh, delta g if delta g equals to 0 that means if delta g if delta g equals to 0 that means the process is at equilibrium if delta g is less than 0 that means the process is a spontaneous and if delta g greater than 0 that means the process is non spontaneous or non feasible is that clear yes sir so i am going to uh, slide it up <clears throat> please write it If you are done with this, let me know, please. Done, sir. Done, sir. Done. Very good. Everyone done with this? Fawaz, Saf? Yes, sir. Done. Okay. okay. So write a topic relation between relation between delta G naught and in next chapter equilibrium we will study about K. K is basically equilibrium constant. In the next class we will study about equilibrium constant. So here is a relation between delta G naught and K which is known as equilibrium constant. We have a formula, a, uh, we have a reaction, a, a plus B, B will give C, C plus D, D. A, A plus B, B will give C, C plus D, D. And we have a formula, we have a relation, delta G equals to delta G naught. See the difference. What is delta G and what is delta G naught? always remember if there is not that is uh, uh, something like zero uh, power is zero power is zero this is known as not okay concentrate here whenever not is present that is for a standard condition and whenever there is no not like this like this zero or o that is not on a standard condition is that clear everyone if i am writing delta h that means change in enthalpy and if i am writing delta h not that means change in enthalpy at a standard or we can say that a standard enthalpy change Ye, this is enthalpy change change in enthalpy this is a standard change in enthalpy is that clear everyone krishna yes sir. but what is the difference this uh, the difference is that uh, this delta is at any temperature any pres uh, any pressure and this delta h not is at a standard condition that represents pressure is at one bar do you remember uh, a standard enthalpy of vaporization a standard enthalpy of combustion yes. when we studied about thermochemistry arsalan krishna uh, if yes, saf are you getting it yes sir okay thank you 
सो दिस नॉट रिप्रेजेंट द स्टैंडर्ड कंडीशन सो वी हैव अ फॉर्मूला वी हैव अ रिलेशन डायरेक्टली डेल्टा जी इज इक्वल टू डेल्टा जी नॉट प्लस आर एल एन आर टी एल एन क्यू एंड बेसिकली वेन एवर वी टॉक अबाउट के दिस दैट मीन्स इट इज एट इक्म कंडीशन आई एम गोइंग टू राइट डेल्टा जी डेल्टा जी इज बेसिकली राइट विद मी गिवस फ्री एनर्जी एट टेम्परेचर टी कैल डेल्टा जी नॉट इज ए स्टैंडर्ड गिवस फ्री एनर्जी ए स्टैंडर्ड गिवस फ्री एनर्जी आर इज बेसिकली गैस कॉन्स्टेंट गैस कॉन्स्टेंट टी इज बेसिकली टेम्परेचर टी इज temperature that is in kelvin and q is basically reaction question that we will study in the next chapter in details as i told you that concentrate here now as i told you that at equilibrium at equilibrium the value of delta g will be zero so at equilibrium delta uh, we have a formula delta g is equal to delta g not plus rt ln q and i already to told you that at equilibrium the value of delta g will be zero so then this will be delta g not and whenever we talk about equilibrium this q will be changed to k and what is k basically we will talk about it in next chapter it is equilibrium constant for now you just need to remember it as constant which constant equilibrium constant and we have a formula between delta g not and k that is delta g not is equal to minus rt ln k can i write this yes so this is the relation it will be more clear when uh, the chemical equilibrium chapter we, <coughs> we will study about chemical equilibrium chapter please write it relation between and let me know if you are done so that i can uh, slide it down sir uh, can you go a little down yes it's okay is it okay ha ha sir okay so what is q q is basically reaction quotient where it is okay okay <clears throat> reaction quotient done yes sir mm, this is the basically relation delta g not equals to
डन सर डन एवरीवन यस सर डन ओके थैंक यू so write a question with me for a reaction delta h equals to 40.63 kilo joule per mole and delta s equals to 100 joule per kelvin find delta g at 27 degree centigrade Sir, delta S is one hundred. Delta H is. Sir, delta S entropy is. One hundred is. Uh, it's one hundred joule per kelvin. Let me correct it. It's one hundred joule per kelvin. One double zero joule per kelvin. <coughs> Any answer, Krishna, Saif, Arsalan, Fawaz, Ifra. okay very good <clears throat> any other answer <clears throat> saif krishna so look here for a reaction delta i is sent given. you the answer okay you just sent me very good very good saif you also send me the answer krishna very good okay you sent me the first and delta s is this and we need to calculate delta g at 27 degree centigrade 27 degree centigrade in kelvin will be 300 kelvin i just gave you a formula delta g is equal to delta h minus t delta s t delta s what is the value of delta s this is in kilo joule <clears throat> so we are going to convert it into joule then it will be 40630 right and uh, the temperature is 300 and here we can multiply it by 100 is it 1000 it is 1000 right so it will be 100 so after solving this it will be 
हाउ मच इट विल बी वन जीरो सिक्स थ्री जीरो जूल पर कैलविन पर मोल इज दिस क्लियर फवाज यस सर यस ओके जस्ट राइट इट एंड लेट मी नो फवाज इफ यू आर डन विद दिस सर डेल्टा जी विल बी ओनली जूल्स राइट वाई सर कैलविन सॉरी इट विल बी it will be cancelled so it will be only joule that was by mistake actually here it will be in joule per mole and here it will be ta temperature in kelvin and here it will be joule per kelvin so kelvin will be ca uh, cancelled by kelvin okay <coughs> I'm going to write another question the delta g not for a reaction at 27 degree centigrade is x kilo calorie if equilibrium constant equbm that means equilibrium constant equbm that means equilibrium and constant is 100 then X is. We need to calculate the value of X. That means we need to calculate the value of delta G naught. <clears throat> And it is given that it is X kilo calorie. And we already. I uh, have studied the re relation between G naught and K. K. done <clears throat> for us ifra krishna saif it's a wrong answer <clears throat> no fares for us <clears throat> look here Delta G not for a reaction at twenty seven degree centigrade. Twenty seven degree centigrade just convert it into Kelvin. 
is x kilo calorie per mole x kilo calorie per mole if equilibrium constant is 100 we know the formula delta g not is equal to minus rt ln k right and we have a formula that is it is x kilo calorie so i am converting into <coughs> x into 1000 is equal to minus r <coughs> the value of r since it is in calorie so i am taking it <coughs> just uh, uh, listen to this this is in lm so we just need to convert it into log so we, we have to multiply it by 2.3 rt and it will be log k do you know this yes sir now delta g naught has a value which is x kilo calorie so i am converting it i am converting it into calorie then it will be x into x into 1000 and it will be minus 2.3 and the value of r in calorie that will be equal to 2 i already told you in the previous class um, <clears throat> states of matter and temperature is 300 and the log k what is the value of log k 100 <clears throat> k has a value which is 100 100 means i can write 10 raised to the power 2 right so I can easily write x is equal to and this log whenever it is in power it will come <coughs> to this then you can see 2.3 into 2 into 300 <coughs> into 2 and this and then this will be only log 10 left upon this will be 1000. Now see I can easily calculate it. <coughs> Here, <coughs> log 10 has a value 1. Log 10 has a value 1. And you know that this, this, this 0 will be cancelled. Now, 2, 3 is a 6. 6, 2 is a 6, 2 is a 12. And 12 into 3, that will be equal to 36. And 12 to the 24, that will be equal to 27 divided by 10. So, the answer will be 2.7 or 6, 2.76. Is that clear? Yes, yes sir. sir. So our value is 8.314, right? Yes. But you have taken two. No, no. Yes. Uh, since this is given in calorie, so I just took R in calorie. Is that clear, sir? It is if it is given in joule, uh, just convert it into joule or just convert this into calorie. Is that clear? Okay, sir. <clears throat> yes, sir. Okay. Just write it and let me know. If done. Done. Sir, how did you get the value of K? How did the uh, K, the value of K is given now. Equilibrium constant is 100. Okay, okay, sir. Okay, everyone. Sir, just a minute, sir. Okay, take your time. Done, sir. Done? Yes, sir. Done. So, sir, what's the unit? Mm, very good. The unit will be calorie. The value of x we need to calculate. Okay. Saf? Yes, sir. Okay. <clears throat> 
for reaction and 2 plus 3H2 will give 2NH3. And here delta H is given as minus 100 kilojoule. And delta S is equal to minus 200 joule per Kelvin. Calculate temperature at which reaction will proceed in forward direction. <clears throat> हो गया बताइए कृष्णा इफ्रा मोहम्मद फवाज जिससे for reaction, this reaction is given. Delta H is given minus 100 kilo joule. And delta S is given minus 200 joule per Kelvin. <coughs> Calculate temperature at which reaction will proceed in forward direction. So we already know that <coughs> delta G is equal to delta H minus T delta S. And we need to have this value less than zero. So the reaction will proceed forward. That means as continuous, whenever this type of question will come, just consider delta G equals to zero. That means at equilibrium, at equilibrium. Then if delta G equals to zero, that means if we will put the value of delta G as zero, then <coughs> delta H will be equal to T delta S and T will be equal to delta H upon delta S. Then T equals to delta H upon Delta S and Delta H has a value minus 100 kilojoule. So I'm converting it, uh, converting it into joule and the value of Delta S will be <coughs> minus 200. And you know that this will be cancelled and negative will be cancelled by negative. Temperature is 500 Kelvin. So the temperature must be less than 500 Kelvin for a spontaneous process. Remember it. Because already you know that this is negative, this is also negative. And if <clears throat> this is negative, negative will be multiplied into negative and it will be positive. So temperature must be less than 500 Kelvin for forward direction, forward reaction. <clears throat> We will take it as equilibrium. So we should consider it as equilibrium. As equilibrium. Whenever this type of question will come, we, uh, when we will uh, study in the next class, chemical equilibrium, it will be more clear. Okay, what is uh, basically equilibrium? Okay. Okay. Sir. <clears throat> Just write it. <clears throat>
done so. Done. Everyone done. Very good. <clears throat> so going to give you another question on this topic for condition for a spontaneous wait a minute. Favorable condition for a spontaneous process, a spontaneous reaction when delta H and delta S both are positive. When both both are positive. Whenever it will come to a spontaneous or non-spontaneous, you have to use the formula delta G is equal to delta H minus T delta S and you have to make delta G less than zero, whatever will be the condition and whatever is the question given. Just think about it. So favorable condition means what we should describe here, sir? Favorable condition basically a spontaneous for a spontaneous process. What is favorable condition? Delta G less than zero. Yes, sir. This is a favorable condition for a spontaneous process. Is that clear? Yes, sir. So that is the answer, sir. Answer is you need to find out in terms of this. What should the value of, uh, what should be the value of this? Both are positive. So how much positive this should be? <clears throat> Just think about it. We need to calculate delta G must be less than zero. So uh, since both are positive, <clears throat> so delta H should be less than T delta S. If this positivity is less than T delta S because this delta S is positive and we already we can see that here is negative and when it will be multiplied by positive, the value will be in negative. So in, in short, T delta S value should be greater so that the whole value, uh, uh, value of delta G can be negative and whenever delta G is negative, it will be as spontaneous. Saif? Yes, sir. <clears throat> Just write it. Very good.
डन सर डन एवरी वन यस सर ओके डू यू सॉल्व एन सी आर टी एवरी वन कृष्णा सैफ यस ओके वेरी गुड आंसर दिस क्वेश्चन so for this lesson i haven't started yet sir okay for the process to occur you should start now okay under adiabatic okay, process just answer me in chat box under adiabatic process or adiabatic condition adiabatic <laughs> condition the correct condition is the correct condition is delta t equals to zero delta p equals to zero q equals to zero w equals to zero <clears throat> sir q is equal to zero any other q equals to 0 i already told you when we yesterday about <coughs> process different types of process okay so uh, please solve all the ncert questions we will continue in next class with a new chapter known as equilibrium equilibrium basically it has two chapters chemical equilibrium and ionic equilibrium first we will study about chemical equilibrium then we will come out uh, come to ionic equilibrium is that clear everyone ifra okay, krishna sir. okay yes thank you for tonight thank you thank you sir okay stay home